What is up guys, Rick Kakis here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today, Bungie released a brand new Vidoc revealing a ton of information about the upcoming Beyond Light expansion and the brand new season launching alongside it. And so, let's get started. Now, first off, let's talk about some new Beyond Light info. And there was some pretty darn juicy stuff revealed today. Mostly, Bungie expanded on some of the stuff we already knew, but threw around some new gameplay, etc. One of the things they talked about is that the destination of Europa is kind of a time capsule. You have this golden age technology, a lot of it built under the surface that has just been frozen and dormant. And when they talked about, especially under the surface, they showed some really interesting gameplay, and I'm talking gameplay from the brand new Deep Stone Crypt Raid. As you can see right here, if you look at the amount of guardians that are being shown, I mean, clearly here, six guardians. And this is not a PvP setting at all. In fact, in this second little piece of gameplay, we see them very clearly in some sort of, you know, laboratory or something like that. Well, Clovis Bray, again, is this research facility and the Deepstone Crypt is its kind of main one and the place where they created the Exos. We also see the six guardians spawning in right here. In fact, I think what we're seeing right here is like the beginning animation to start off the brand new raid. And uh, that's pretty darn exciting. Now, another thing we got to take a look at is some brand new stasis subclass abilities and upgrades. Remember that with Beyond Light, one of the best features, in my opinion, is that the subclass layouts are being completely redesigned. No more are you going to simply select a node of perks, like an attunement. Instead, you mix and match your abilities, and then you have aspects and fragments. Aspects kind of being like bigger perks, what we would traditionally see in the current attunement nodes, and then fragments being additional upgrades alongside that, both of which you're going to actually find and loot in the world. So as we take a look at this Shadebinder Warlock Stasis subclass, we can see one of the new ones here for an aspect, Ice Flare Bolts. So shattering a frozen target grants a small amount of grenade energy and spawns seekers that track and freeze other nearby targets. Holy crap, so you freeze one guy, you shatter that enemy, and then you got like stasis axtian darts going out and seeking out other enemies, freezing them so then you can shatter them and then just continue the chain. That seems pretty darn powerful. Now we also interestingly see that this stasis aspect has three fragment slots, so three potential upgrades to it. But if we look at another uh, different stasis aspect, this one we have seen before, where casting your rift generates a shockwave that freezes nearby enemies, if you haven't seen that, of course, that's very darn useful, but this only has one fragment slot. So potentially this is a balancing factor or potentially you can get varying degrees of aspects. Like you could potentially get a frost pulse that had two or three fragment slots instead. But we talked about those fragment slots. What kind of fragments are you putting into them? Well, we actually got to look at several new ones here. So one of the things you could put in is Whisper of Hedrons. So gain a bonus to weapon damage after freezing a target with stasis. Oh, that seems pretty good. In fact, a little too good because Bungie also decided to give it minus 10 to your overall strength for equipping to balance it out. Moving on from there, another new fragment is the Whisper of Fissures. So increase the damage and size of the burst of stasis when you destroy a stasis crystal or defeat a frozen target. Now remember, the one aspect we looked at that created the stasis axion bolts when you showered an enemy, that can equip both of those things and one more all at the same time. 
But very interestingly, another thing that was revealed is we actually saw gameplay of a player selecting their darkness subclass from their inventory screen. So as you can see right here, this hunter actually goes and selects a special node next to their currently equipped solar gunslinger subclass. So we see that big solar subclass and then we see the little two, uh, you know, squares off to the side that you would traditionally get to select either arc or void. But then we have that completely different node to the right and when you hover over it, it says select darkness subclasses. Yes, I am not reading that wrong. It says subclasses, plural. Now the way this is laid out, and I think most of us would have thought that it just gets added to those little squares on the left. Like you have void, you have arc, and then you have a little darkness node. But no, it's its own UI. When you select it, it seems to kind of change over. And then obviously the light subclasses are the other selection. So could this be hinting at the fact that we're going to get multiple darkness subclasses? Stasis is one of them. And maybe we get poison in the future, or I don't even know what it would be, but the way this UI is laid out, that is, and again, the way it says subclasses plural, even though there's only one darkness subclass, that is actually really interesting. But another thing we can see from this inventory screen is if you look at the weapons and the exotic ghost shell, actually, they all have the same symbol, kind of two triangles pointing down. This is actually the seasonal symbol, because if you look over at the armor, that's a totally different symbol, and that symbol is much more associated with Beyond Light. So this is kind of our introduction to the fact that today, Bungie also actually unveiled Season of the Hunt, which is the new seasonal activity, and that's going to be what the, you know, seasonal pass is based in that is launching alongside Beyond Light. So let's take a look at that. Right here is the new Keystone seasonal art, and the story is that you're helping the spider Osiris, as you can see, and also Aldrin, as you can also see, he is a back after being revived after the events of Forsaken, and apparently he doesn't remember what he did, but I remember, so might still pop a cap in this guy, but, but anyways, those are who you're kind of helping and assisting in this seasonal storyline as you go and destroy these kind of hive cryptoliths as they come down and really gather, I guess, power information for Savathun. Like, this is going to start out the storyline because it's, you know, based in the hive. These are agents of Savathun, and they're going to lead all the way through this season and the three more additional seasons in year four to the next fall expansion where we take on Savathun in 2021. In fact, we also today had the reveal of the seasonal calendar for Season of the Hunt. So importantly, it says that it's taking place from November to February. That is already a pretty huge thing because normally we get the next expansion after the big fall expansion in December. Obviously, that would be extremely close quarters with it releasing in November, so that does make sense. But we also see all the content coming in Beyond Light and then free to all players. We have the seasonal artifact becoming unlocked on November 10th, obviously, but it's going to be a week of kind of just experiencing all of the new content of Beyond Light, which makes sense. And then the season mission is going to begin that next reset on the 17th. And those hive involved Wraithborn hunts, those are kind of the special seasonal activity. Those are going to begin there as well. And very interestingly, that's kind of it for things with the season of the hunt symbol on this calendar, right? But this is actually intentional. Bungie says in a released article today that you can actually go back anytime during year four. So if you're watching this video six months from now, right, you can go back and start 
the season of the hunt seasonal mission from spider and do that content like this is going to be around kind of all year so you don't have the fomo of previous seasons you don't have like oh season of dawn is about to end everything involved with that the new activity that you like all that stuff is going away no it's going to persist throughout all of year four and i think overall that is a massive improvement we also quite interestingly have a list of exotics right here exotic weapons and armor now earlier in the year bungie released kind of a trailer and a website update detailing a bunch of these exotics it was four exotic weapons and six exotic armor pieces i've done a video check it out linked up above if you want to know everything about those exotics but there was 10 in total like i said four weapons six armor pieces listed here is 12. the new ones being firstly the hawk moon which of course we did know about and then the duality that one, that one's the one that stands out. But moving on from there, the last thing we're talking about today is launching alongside all of this content is even more content in the form of a remade Cosmodrome. Now the Cosmodrome was the original starting area in Destiny 1. And of course, with things changing pretty dramatically in Beyond Light and a lot of the planets, Io, Mars, Titan, etc. going away, you're gonna have to have a new player experience. And that's what the Cosmodrome is for. You're going to start out there, you're gonna encounter a friendly guardian and uh, kind of the Cosmodrome vendor, and you're going to be led into what destiny is kind of that's your tutorial now of course you can go there as a veteran player and right here we actually get our first look at the cosmodrome map like what this area is going to look like so there's a couple of different areas where public events are taking place interestingly we do see some updates like over in forgotten shore we actually see a lost sector which of course wasn't around in destiny one so there are going to be some kind of new goodies within this cosmodrome area and a new strike with the devil's lair that's being added with the cosmodrome as well so guys that is it for the video i hope you enjoyed found this informative and if you did Please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.